Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial by for Oxygen Not Included where we're looking at base heating. I'm going to cover how to heat areas which may be particularly useful in the Rime asteroid or other cold planetoids which have very low temperatures. The main focus will be on these two buildings, the space heater and the liquid tepidizer which are the primary ways of heating provided in the game. Before going on to that though, it's important to point out that most industrial buildings produce heat. Of course this can be used to heat areas by simply putting machines in cold areas and letting them run. I'm not going to cover this in detail however, as it's difficult to control and usually it's a case of cooling rather than heating that's required. Industrial bricks, which are made when industrial machines are grouped together, will be covered in their own tutorial bite. So moving on to the main two heating buildings, the numbers paint a very clear picture. The space heater consumes 120 watts and produces 18 kilo DTUs with an efficiency of 150 DTUs per watt. Note here that a DTU is a measure of heat energy. On the other hand, the liquid tepidizer consumes 960 watts and produces slightly over 4000 kilo DTUs with an efficiency of around 4200 DTUs per watt. This makes it 225 times more powerful and 28 times more efficient. Clearly the tepidizer is strictly better and I would advise not using space heaters in most cases. The only real benefit of the space heaters is that they're easy to place. For the tepidizer you'll still need to supply 960 watts, they must be submerged in liquid and there's a temperature limit of 85 degrees. But the liquid condition and temperature limit can be avoided which I will explain shortly. Using the tepidizer is most effectively done with a heating loop which is essentially the same as a cooling loop. A closed loop is better as it requires no power for pumping and I explained this in the tutorial bite for pipes linked in the card. To recap here, simply make a closed loop of pipe work with a bridge to ensure the flow continues. Then fill the loop, ideally with a bridge to prevent it from clogging up. Polluted or normal water are typical liquids to use and the pipes should be made from granite due to the thermal conductivity with radiant piping in key areas. For more information on this, check out my tutorial bite on specific heat capacity and thermal conductivity. This then runs through a liquid pool with a tepidizer, which is controlled simply by a thermo sensor set to below the desired temperature. The tepidizer will then turn on when it's too cold. A useful point is how to trick the tepidizer to ignore the liquid and temperature limits, although I should note that some consider this an exploit, so it's up to you if you want to use this or not. If not, then there's another way to accomplish this using an aqua tuner to remove heat from a coolant. It's extremely useful to be able to heat higher than 85 degrees, and I often use this in hot industrial bricks to boil the polluted water made by petroleum or natural gas generators. This can then be collected as steam by steam turbines, and heating the carbon dioxide ensures the right temperature range for molten slicksters. Another use is to boil water for steam rockets, and here are example setups with both a tricked tepidizer and an aqua tuner. This is incredibly useful for running steam rockets in the base game, but particularly useful in the spaced out DLC. There are a couple of ways to trick the tepidizer, but all rely on quickly pulsing an automation signal between green and red. This is because as the tepidizer is turned on, it heats for a short time before checking the requirements. The simplest way to do this is to use a timer sensor set to the minimum values but this has no control and will heat until you stop it, or it overheats. Therefore my preference is to use a thermo sensor that runs straight through a knock gate. When a knock gate receives a red signal connected to both ports, it starts flipping rapidly, creating the desired effect. Counterintuitively, the thermo sensor needs to be set to red when it needs to work, so to boil water here, the sensor is set to above 140 degrees C. Also be careful choosing the building material, as the tepidizer's base overheat temperature is 125 degrees C, and heat exchange is significantly worse when in a gas. For boiling water, gold amalgam is recommended as a minimum, but steel would be more robust. If you want to know more about how to get steel, then see my tutorial bite on this topic. Quickly touching on the aqua tuner setup, simply use an aqua tuner, again ideally made from steel, with the cooling loop running through a pool with a tepidizer. The aqua tuner can be controlled by a thermo sensor and enabled when the temperature gets below the target number. From there, the cold needs to be counteracted. If you have a cooling need, then this can serve a dual function, but if the coolant is getting too cold, then using a tepidizer in the intended way can counteract this. Beware that the power draw for this system is significant at just over 2 kilowatts, so ensure that the colony's power generation is well resourced. 
and that's all for this quick look at heating in oxygen not included. I hope this lets your colonies thrive on coal planetoids, and thanks for watching.